Power TV, lifestyle and leadership integrated. Building a stronger nation, one woman at a time. I wonder what would happen if instead of trying to be good at everything, if I focused in on what my strengths actually are. That's not a bad thing, realizing what you're good at. And sometimes the best action to take is to let others take action. There's huge power in knowing what you can do when and to what degree of effectiveness. It's not about having all the power. It's about knowing not only what power exists within ourselves, but in those around us and everything around us. I'm Kate Bergen. This is Power TV. On today's show, the importance of not taking yourself too seriously when stepping into a serious role. The value of putting yourself first so that you can be present and available to others. Today, we sit down with Josie Osborne, the mayor of Tofino, British Columbia. But also some humility, so knowing that nobody's perfect. Move Me, Jody Jackson, golf and performance coach, connects mind, body, and spirit. Encouragement to keep moving, concentrate on what you can do not what you can't. That is going to strengthen you. Fuel me, Sherry Strong, food philosopher, chef, and nutritionist. What the world needs now. Fresh veggies, a solution for more strength and stamina. Teach me, Laura Grizzly Paws. Music, a vibration from within reflecting a heartbeat. And sometimes, it shows up in places, well, that you least expect it. And finally, our note to self, Steely Springham, inspirational conversationalist and coach, brings it all home, moving from inspiration into action. Power TV, this is what happens when Canadian women who are making an impact in sport, business, the arts, and community leadership come together. Inspire Me, real life stories and solutions from Canadian women who thrive in their field. Power, passion, and purpose. We have it all, and we can become more powerful when we use that purpose and passion to lift, to lead, and create. Sometimes that passion shows up in places that we would least expect it. When Josie Osborne moved to Tofino in 1998, she did not expect to become mayor. She was acclaimed when the mayor at the time took another job and it took a lot of encouragement sessions from friends to convince her that it was something that she needed, something that she should be doing. Thank you for being here today, Josie. Your passion for the environment, your passion for wellness, your passion for keeping things fun. Did you think that the role of mayor had none of that and there were none of those options there? I wasn't sure, to be honest, but I knew that I couldn't do that job unless I could combine all of those things into that role. So I took it on. And, but there's no way of knowing that there's, going in. No, you're right. There's no way of knowing it. I think it's like there's many things in life you have no idea what it's like until you're actually in it. Mm -hmm. The learning curve is huge. But I did make a promise, and I said this in my, my very first speech. My, when, I, when I started, I was sworn in, and I had the grade four class from the elementary there in front of me, which was fantastic, <laughs> and I promised to have fun. And how was that received? It, it was clapping. People were really happy to see that somebody was gonna take on a role like that and take the role seriously, but enjoy oneself and show us that you can do it with having fun. And that is a balance. You can't have too much fun because then people don't think that you're approaching your job. No, absolutely. So I got some really good advice from another mayor at the time and he said, take your role very seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. And I think it's good to remind yourself when you're in politics, you're in elected office, that this is a, 
it's a temporary role. This is a, a an office that you fill for a time, mm -hmm. and you should do your very, very best, but not to let the role define you or overcome you and, and, and make you something that you're not. You still need to be yourself, mm -hmm. and you really need to let yourself shine through. What and kind of conversations do you have? Do you, do you, do you, are you telling yourself, oh, I'm having too much fun in this situation, or this is a time now to be serious, and what is the the key that, that tells you which line I, to well, walk. I, you know, I think there's a lot of serious matters in an elected office and there's mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, you're making decisions that affect people's lives mm -hmm. and you need to always remember that. Place yourself in their shoes. Think about how they might feel. But at the same time, I think you need to let whatever joie de vivre that you have or enjoyment that you have. And I, I really love talking to people or really I should say listening to people and mm -hmm. understanding what makes them tick and what they're interested in and what they think. And so why not enjoy that part of it? There's a lot of um, criticism hurled at politicians. You're being judged, you're being observed, you're doing it right, you're doing it wrong. And I was at your power talks in Nanaimo back in October, and you talked about having a thick skin, and you didn't think that your skin was thick enough to that, be in politics. That was a big part of my decision of whether or not to run for mayor. I was under the impression that you had to have a really thick skin to be a politician because like you just said, people were gonna people are gonna say mm -hmm. things, they're gonna judge you, they may be unkind at times, they'd be critical. Mm -hmm. And could I could I take that? And so what I've learned is that it's more about having a permeable skin and you do need to let criticism in. It's really important that your ideas be criticized or that other suggestions be made that are constructive and might help for better decisions and better outcomes in the end. But sometimes people say things that unfortunately are hurtful or personal and you can't let that stuff in. So you need to remain true to yourself, know who you are, know what your values are, project those, be, stay constant with them, and let the important things in and maybe the more personal things that... Where does that uh, skill come from? You have oh. to have a certain level of confidence to be able to, to have that self-monitoring, to know what to hear and what to push away. I think you do, and I, I think, it, you know, for me, it definitely comes with, as I've gotten a little older and understood what I'm good at and what I'm mm. not so good at, and... Confidence is part of it, but also some humility. So knowing that nobody's perfect mm -hmm. and you can't be perfect all the time. So you might as well face it. There's people out there who, who love you and respect you or like you or, you know, and they, they're there to help. And I think that when you think about the interactions you have with people, you know, you, you, you want them to do well. Yeah. You're watching somebody in public speaking or you're seeing a friend try a new job for the first time and you want them to do well. I think most people feel that way. Mm -hmm. And you need to remember that and, and take that in. Okay, we're going to talk more about the role of the mayors today and how that fits in to leadership. We'll, we'll be back with more from Josie Osborne in just a minute. But right now it's time for high performance, tapping into the power of your mind with Move Me. Hi there, welcome to Move Me. I'm Jody Jackson, and today we are with Roz Pringle. She is a Zumba instructor extraordinaire. And you have a story to tell because I'm really curious what brought you to dance or Zumba? Well, basically, uh, just a love of dance. Um, I've, ever since I was a little girl, I used to love to dance, and um, I had some barriers that stopped me from dancing, and this was a way that I could still incorporate movement and uh, dance at the same time and I loved the music and um, I loved going to class and, and watching my instructor. Now I know that um, there's a lot of people out there that when they get injured or they're maybe given a diagnosis of some kind they often quit moving mm -hmm. and today I'm encouraging people to keep moving do you have a personal story that you're willing to share with us? I, I understand that you've come through something similar. Yeah I had um, was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis uh, about 25 years ago and um, I started to do activities like skiing and things that I could do um, and not concentrating on the things I can't do. I fell in love with Zumba and I loved the music and I thought what a great way to keep moving and to keep fit. Eventually you became a Zumba instructor and you are absolutely loved in this community. I just partic participated in one of your classes and I had the best time ever dance. Maybe physical benefits, mental, emotional, spiritual. 
Well, um, certainly movement and fluidity in your body to me is really important. Um, we become more flexible if we keep moving and we keep fluid. We don't try and do any hard impact, um, keeping those joints lubricated all the time. Um, we also have people that come and tell me that it's like their meditation for the week or whatever because we just get lost in it and we forget about what's happening in our daily lives. And so when the class leaves, they're all happy and they talk about it and they look forward to it. And there are no rules in Zoom, but that's the beauty of it is that, um, you know, if, if you're, I'm doing one thing and you're doing something else, hey, and if your move's better than mine, I might steal it for next week's class. <laughs> well, so. I joined your class today, my first Zumba class, by the way. I felt really intimidated and a little bit vulnerable when I started, but the environment was fantastic. The community event made it easier for me to come out and do that, and I did have a few odd kind of quirky moves, and you just smiled at me and I smiled back, and it was a really safe environment. So please don't feel intimidated. Come out and join some Zumba and dance classes in your, in your neighborhood. Thank you very much for, for sharing your story. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you, folks. Movement is medicine, motion is lotion. inspire me with purpose. One simple definition of the word purpose is the feeling of being determined to do or achieve something. And for me, the challenge lies in choosing what purpose is most important in the moment because there's so many different paths of purpose to walk on. There's a drive to achieve that I have a hard time putting to words and focus what I'm driving towards, but it feels really good when you're heading in the right direction and you know when that's happening. Do you feel that in your role as mayor? I absolutely do, maybe for the first time in my life. Really? Mm -hmm. And how do you know? What does that feeling feel like? That every single day I get up and I look forward to what is going to unfold and what I'm gonna do that day. And for the first time in my life, I, I, I feel lucky I've had a lot of jobs where roles that I feel like an effective person but this is a role where you can see the change that you're making almost on a daily basis. And that's incredibly rewarding. I've heard people say that they think they can make more impact in a community outside of council chambers and not in the role of politician. And I'm hearing from you the opposite. Well, I think it depends on the person. So right. I, am, I really view my role as one of a facilitator a, a person who can help convene people, build bridges between parts of the community that may not normally talk, and, and work with a, a group of people to find out what that collective vision or uh, decision needs to be. Where does the community want to go? And I don't think you can do that without vision. I certainly have, I think, a strong vision of the kind of community that I want to live in and the kind of community that I think Tofino is and should be even more of. Mm -hmm. But I, can ne I could never do that alone. So I have to work with a team of people. And I think that's the, the, the part that, well, I find it really exciting. Mm -hmm. I, I don't always know what's going to happen, but I do know that if I can bring the right kinds of people together and that we can have a good and respectful and productive conversation, we are going to maybe inch, maybe leap forward in the right direction. Sounds like collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. Do, are women naturally inclined to collaborate I think together? So. And is that playing mm -hmm. a part in the success that you're having in your I role? Think so. I think so. I think women are, are, are natural collaborators. Mm -hmm. I think women are natural caretakers or caregivers and are generally really good listeners. So I think women have a knack for creating a space where people can feel comfortable to say what they think. Mm -hmm. Your purpose is very clear to make Tofino more of what it already is and mm -hmm. better than it mm -hmm. already is. Do you think the purpose has fluidity and, and the purpose changes as you go along and, and how do you adapt to that or even acknowledge it in the first place? I think, I think purpose needs to have some fluidity in that it, it, it's flexible and can bend a little bit to the winds of the time and what's happening and certain circumstances arise that you may have never intended or planned for and you need to be able to adapt to those. But I think that a group of people who live together in a community have a, a, a path and a, a, a way that they want to be and live together that I, mm -hmm. I don't know that that changes too, too much. Mm -hmm. Vision, clarity, mm -hmm. collaboration. What are some of the challenges in, a, in achieving that? 
It's that's it, a big question. <laughs> that's a big question. <laughs> you have to be incredibly patient, mm. and you need to be a very good listener. And sometimes that's hard. Sometimes something's happening at home or in my life, and mm -hmm. my mind is elsewhere, and I have to try to refocus and make sure that I'm giving the people or the person I'm with my mm -hmm. full attention. It's exhausting. I'll Hi. tell you the truth. It, it is. You need. I need a lot of energy to do my job. I'm a real people person, mm -hmm. but energy has to be punctuated by periods of rest and you need to rejuvenate yourself and re-inspire yourself and it's really important to make that time for yourself and for your friends and for your family so that you can continue without burning out. Okay, we're going to talk more about that. Continuing to fuel the power to follow yeah. the passion towards <laughs> your purpose in just a minute, but how much time do you spend thinking about purpose in nourishing your body? Here's Fuel Me. What the world needs now is food, real food. It's the best thing that is going to strengthen you. You see all this muscle? Are you intimidated by all of this? Anyway, probably not. Probably not intimidated by my singing and dancing moves. In fact, Char, executive producer, when I was practicing, she said to me, I'm so glad you can cook well. I'm thinking there's a message in it, not sure. Anyway, if you want to get strong, you want to have stamina uh, to power you through the day so that you can get the things done that you need to get done, you want to start to eat the foods that, think about the mammals that are the strongest and have the most stamina on the planet. They are herbivores, okay? They have the biggest muscle mass and they create that all with vegetation and particularly green vegetation is going to be the most powerful food that you can have and sometimes it doesn't it feels uncomfortable because when we're feeling low energy often our attraction is to high energy foods and often processed foods that's just going to sink our energy again it's like i often say to people when we're feeling down or depressed or having low energy we don't typically tend to sit on the couch watching uplifting movies eating a bowl of raw broccoli and carrots, right? We tend to go for those indulgent foods. So if you can prepare yourself ahead of time, make sure your fridge has lots of those things in it. You know, things like wild rice you can have prepared ahead of time. You just pull it out of the freezer, you know, um, uh, let it thaw out. Uh, beans and pulses you can do the same with. And for immediate kind of snack foods, if you want that kind of crunchy, salty thing, I use sprouted sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds, you can buy them sprouted already. And these are also things that you can incorporate into your salad. So you've got texture, flavor, and all those things that are going on. For those of you who have been, I would say, kind of influenced by modern media around nutrition and feel that you have to have tons of protein, you have to have tons of cooked food or starches and things like that, I wanna tell you about two friends of mine who are were in their late 60s, she was, she was in her late 60s, he was in his early 70s, and three years ago now, they ran around Australia, they did a marathon every day for 366 days, all powered on raw plant foods, no animal anything, okay, and they were in their late 60s and 70s, Jeanette and Alan Wakelin, uh, Murray Wakelin, they're amazing, Okay, and they did that all on plants. So just think about if you, you don't even have to run a marathon a year in order to sustain yourself, but imagine the clean kind of feeling that you're gonna get if you're just putting super green, rich, lush foods into your body. There's a saying that we have with Power TV is the stronger we are, the stronger we are. And if you want to do this, I, my personal belief is you need to make strong choices for a strong life. And by choosing these things consistently, using beautiful herbs and oils, you know, and spices to add flavor to them, to make them exciting to your palate, you're gonna have so much energy, you're not gonna know what to do with it. And if you'd like more tips, tools, strategies, and recipes to nourish, energize, protect, and strengthen you, simply go to returntofood.com.
Music is really soulful. It's thrilling. It's like a vibration uh, that comes from within. And one of the beautiful things about singing was that it reflected the heartbeat. And so the drum, uh, according to our understandings, was that the drum beat represented the heartbeat of a nation, but also a heartbeat of a woman. So the heartbeat was the first thing that we would hear of an infant or a fetus in, in the womb of a, of a woman. That was also the first beat that the, the fetus would hear of the mother. And so that was caring. So that drum is really symbolic as it represents that heartbeat. And then when women come together, or any group come together, and they sing and they celebrate and they express that, and when there's social harmony and that unity and that voice and that cultural expression, then it was like our hearts began to beat together as one. And that has to be the most amazing, powerful feeling ever to be able to experience that and to express that and to have that passion for um, singing that soulful music. Power. It's a word that we throw around and often associate with politics and strength. It wasn't so long ago that it was a word that was associated with the males in our species. I also think that power is something unique to each of us and something that shows up in different ways depending on the situation that we find ourselves in. We often think of a mayor as being a powerful position. Has that been your experience in your role? It's certainly been my experience that people can perceive it to be a position of power. But the truth is, a mayor is one of five or seven or nine members yeah. of a council, and you have no more true power than anybody else does. So operating as a collective, but still the person who is in charge of a room, in charge of a meeting, uh, has a particular office to fill, and there is a, yeah, I guess I would call it a sense of power that could be attributed to that. What, give, what gives you a personal sense of power? My personal sense of power comes from, uh, well, being well rested, that's for sure. <laughs> Getting a good easier night's sleep. Easier said than done, isn't it? <laughs> Much easier said than done. But I, I think my sense of power really comes from a conviction of knowing who I am and what I stand for and, and what, where my beliefs are and, and what supports me. Mm -hmm. And then being able to go out into the world every day and execute my role. Mm -hmm. Now, I, had a, I, I have to use the, the description. Uh, Josie Osborne, the mayor of Tofino, the vegan, fun-loving, seaweed-eating mayor. <laughs> that sounds completely empowering to me. Those things are true. What an interesting combination <laughs> of things. And these are things that that you almost used to recharge. Absolutely. I mean, we make, we're making light of it, and we yeah. make a joke of, joke of it, but we referred earlier to what you do taking care of yourself to make sure that you can stay in that place of personal power, personal purpose. Mm -hmm. um, what do you do? Well, I take a five kilometer walk on the beach every day. That's a big part of it. At 5.30 in the morning? Yeah, I get up at 5.30 and then I'm out the door by about 10 after six. And uh, that's, a, that's a big part of just being outdoors, rain or shine. Mm. And out on the beach, Chesterman Beach in Tofino, of course you're exposed to the, all the sea winds and the air and the, you can see the trees and you know, feel the sand. And that's a big part of staying fresh and, and recharged, eating well, spending time with friends, um, trying not to, well, here's something I'm getting better at, not checking email at night. If someone knows, if someone needs to get a hold of me, they know how to get a hold of me. But mm -hmm. sometimes when you, you open email or you check your phone messages late at night, that's what you take to bed with you. That's, mm -hmm. that's what you might, yeah, that's what you take into your sleep and into your dreams. And mm -hmm. I, that's not a very healthy thing for me to take. I think sometimes we feel obligated to respond in a timely manner mm -hmm. to people and there's different demands, there's many demands. And I don't know, I, I'm a, I feel like I'm, I'm a giver and I, I put other people's time before my own time, um, if, if that makes any sense. And so what I'm giving up is the ability, the opportunity to recharge it, you, and stay on purpose. Right. Yeah, and it, it makes perfect sense. I think many of us are like that. This is a busy, hectic, fast-paced world. The temptation is to be very reachable, to be very accessible, to, to answer, to, to fulfill 
what we think other people's expectations of ourselves are. Mm -hmm. But just like they say when you fly on an airplane, put the oxygen mask on yourself before you put it on somebody else. And I think we have to remember that throughout life. Take care of yourself because if you don't do that, you can't help take care of others. I wasn't sure if I was going to bring it up, but I think I'm going to. Um, last year, a tragedy in Tofino, mm -hmm. and I read that you put yourself in front of the media to give space to the people who had to grieve and needed that space. And this was the Leviathan mm -hmm. that sank. The Leviathan. Leviathan. Mm -hmm. Did um, that, that, that's knowing how to let other people recharge in their power. Mm -hmm. Was that an instinctive for you to know that that was the thing to do in that moment? I had no idea that's what I was doing. Mm. I, in all honesty, I, I got the phone call. I looked at my husband. I said, I need to go. I have to go be the mayor. And but he you said, didn't know what that meant in that moment. No. And he said, okay, I'll see you when I see you. And he knew that, you know, I had, I had to go. That was it. And it just, everything that happened after that flowed and there was a, a, a natural progression to things and then mm -hmm. a very natural way of working with the first responders and the staff and all the support mm -hmm. that was coming in and the media that arrived and the th basically three solid days mm -hmm. of, of um, being a face for Tofino. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was the right thing to do. Absolutely, it a was good the right thing. I wouldn't change a thing. Mm -hmm. No. It's interesting that you say it's time for me to go be the mayor. Mm -hmm. So you're not the mayor all the time. You can't be the mayor all the time. <laughs> you still have to be. That's yourself. when you don't check your emails yeah, and that's you don't right. look at your phone. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to do something now. We're going to leave you today with what we call a power bite. Now, there's a little turtle on our set and uh, just moments before recording this edition of Power TV, we, mm -hmm. we put messages, we put little bits of power in mm -hmm. uh, the turtle. So I'm gonna ask you, Josie, okay. to uh, choose our, our leaving thought mm -hmm. today. All right. And you can go ahead and just share it with, with our viewers and that's how we're gonna end. All right. <laughs> I love this. So is it a good one? It's, it's a, a good, good one. one. A powerful and purposeful life includes play and fun. How on point is that? <laughs> Thank you for being here today. Thank you. <laughs>